Well, how's this for a story? The terror group ISIS using eBay and PayPal to send cash to a suspected terrorist in the United States. And apparently, it involves even more lone wolves and other terrorists using this system. This is going to be used for a terrorist attack here that was thwarted. Here's how it worked. The accused lone wolf terrorist in Maryland was making fake sales of computer printers on eBay. He get the cash via PayPal from ISIS in Syria, again, to launch a terror attack here. This is a global network, according to the FBI, using eBay and PayPal. It reaches from the U.K. to Bangladesh. Let's do a quick chock, uh, stock check of eBay, the company ending the day in the green. With me now is American Islamic Forum for Democracy president, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Good to see you, uh, doctor. What Thank do you, you make of this PayPal story with ISIS? And eBay. Well, it just goes, it goes to show you that regardless of how much they're going to be on the run in Raqqa or in Mosul, that's their state. Uh, but ultimately, the, the, what makes them operate and what makes them successful as a terror organization is getting individuals to complete their acts. This guy, El Shinawi, swore allegiance to ISIS. By the way, this is a year ago. So we're hearing about this because the, the FBI had arrested him. His an original financier in Syria. Uh, uh, Saif al Sujun is now believed to be dead. So hats off to the Bureau, to the FBI, Department of Homeland Security for getting this network. But it's really not only a needle in a haystack, but a hydra where you cut off one and you get so many more. Yes, we finally have them on the run in, in, in uh, 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 Mosul and Raqqa, but at the end of the day, it's like a whack a mole. We get one and we find out they're using other networks. The internet is their. MO, you know, their modus operandi, if you will. That's how they get the money back and forth. And now we're learning they're using eBay and selling fake printers when, in fact, it's the way to make them operational here in America. What do you make of uh, the U.S. authorities believing it's a global network that stretches from the U.K. to Bangladesh? Are you surprised by all of that? No, I mean, it only stands to reason. Uh, when you are looking at plots out of Australia, plots out of uh, uh, Turkey, uh, their handbook out of Turkey said that they were how to do lone wolf operations, 60 pages, be it vehicular jihad, financial jihad out of the uh, internet, and then how to become operational and commit an act because every successful, whether it's one dead, God forbid more than that, the bottom line is, is that that makes their brand continue to live. So anything they can do through the internet, they will continue to do. It's global, and we have to continue to expose the ideology because our homeland security can only continue to unroof these networks uh, uh, so long until one of them is going to continue to get through. You know, they've been pretty adept on the internet and uh, social media, you know, tagging to major events like, say, soccer using hashtag and then the soccer event in order to recruit. Um, James Comey, former director of the FBI, warned uh, a year or so ago that there would be a terrorist diaspora coming out of Mosul and Raqqa. Do you see that happening? That's a really good point because we, you know, there's a lot of complacency in saying that since we finally have a president who is allowing our Department of Defense to do the work they need to to end the threat as a state in Syria of ISIS and in northern Iraq, we somehow will get complacent. But all that's going to do is shift the clock back to 2000 to 2010 when Al Qaeda was growing and there were different operatives in various caves, whatever it may be, to Afghanistan with the Taliban. There are so many havens for terrorists. All they need is one operative to stimulate it through the internet. The finances are flowing. As we see now, they're using PayPal, other uh, uh, technical means of transferring funds through fake operations. So it's not going to go away until we Muslims begin to eradicate the core precursor ideologies versus simply focusing on violence. And I hope President Trump and his administration can begin to shift away, which we've seen. The countering violent extremism narrative is now going away in exchange, I hope, for countering violent Islamism because they are going to be always a year or two ahead of us when it comes to counterterrorism.